Hello and welcome to Alex Kadex Creative Sandbox making WWE Superstars Art. My name is Alex and let's continue with the things that we stopped previously, which is not going to happen. So, uh, <laughs> again, I'm implementing changes constantly, I'm still adapting to the new way of working with WWE, with, uh, WWE making, uh, making WWE Superstars stream. For me it's all about adapting still, I'm kind of trying to find my balance, what I need to do during the, during the streams and etc. And because of this, um, there's going to be, uh, like, the streams are going to be consistent, I'm going to stream, like, on a schedule. Um, but one thing, what one thing that will change is the format of the streams. 
So, and with time, I guess I will figure out how, how exactly these streams will go. So yeah, let's just check the sound and start to talk about it. Again, today's session is going to be rather weird. Um, so, and with time, I guess I will... Works. Um, so what I will try to do, uh, so it's time to change the direction. So the same happened for the Twitch streams. Uh, at the beginning, I started Twitch streams by basically work like overviewing the fundamentals, preparing myself to working with portraits. And actually I kind of wanted to create the actual portraits, um, not just by like, oh, like painting them from the existing photos, uh, which is kind of would, would, would work like just studying, but instead I decided, okay, I need to work with portraits in a little bit more complex or like way. And because of this, um, there was cr like, I created a uh, specific thing for the portraits. Wait a sec, I wanna show you this quickly. Uh, I already kind of demonstrated it multiple times, but still. I, I developed a uh, a portrait pipeline uh, that in which I basically integrated studying. So I didn't want to just create portraits like the way that I'm going to create them today and from now on, which we will get to in a couple of minutes. So I needed to find a way to study portraits, study anatomy during the creation process. So in order to add a creativity and, and more experience into creating those portraits and this is exactly what i started to do uh last week on youtube i decided okay first we studied the anatomy through the sculpting and it was kind of effective uh, again it was kind of the part of the fourth stage uh, of the creation process which basically working with a fighting ref uh, references studying those references um, underpainting or reverse engineering the character that we're working with at that point it was CM Punk and it's still CM Punk for a month or maybe more um, <coughs> so we started with the skull then we added basically a nose ear uh, ears and neck and basically eyes uh, then we started to sculpt muscles and then we started to we worked on the anatomy form throughout this process while sculpting it and in result we basically came up with this so wait a sec i need to find it quickly i already multiple times showed it but still why not show it again Again, since today is a uh, r like crazy switch of direction, I want to talk about things like where where they're going to go from now on. Um, so, no, this is the the place when we started with the idea. I guess it was before. So yeah, um, so basically, uh, at the beginning, when I started the, these streams, I thought, okay, I I'm just going to start with sculpting, I'm just going to uh, analyze sculpting, I'm going to learn sculpting, I'm going to become better in sculpting, and let's see what it go, uh, what, what, where exactly it will go, because I actually plan to sculpt things till the end, and in the end, pr like, pr like, um, present this in a sculpting way. At least it was like the it, the plan in the beginning. Um, throughout a couple of weeks, um, I started to think about uh, what exact final representation will be. And since in most cases I'm going to be a 2D painter and I'm going to like 2D artist and I'm going to present things in 2D, not in 3D results. Because of this, I kind of thought to myself, okay, uh, sculpting is a good way to study form, but it's not necessarily for me, uh, like it, it doesn't work for me if I will present the results in 3D because it will create a pretty weird kind of um, not clear understanding who am I as an artist. So like, am I a 3D artist or am I a 2D artist? And because of that, I decided, okay, I'm just going to use 3D for the purpose of studying and then I will integrate it into the process, into the creating process, which was exactly what I did. Um, I integrated this, um, uh, so, um, I didn't integrate it into the creating process first because first I worked on integrating the painting type of studying and drawing type of studying on Twitch. Well, again, on Twitch I'm not using sculpting to create pro projects, I'm just basically working with drawings only and with painting. Uh, but on YouTube I decided that I'm going to kind of combine a sculpting with uh, the painting and uh, if we're going to create a like WW Superstars uh, art, uh, I always going to go from basically 
uh, yeah, we're going to s study their form through the sculpting, which is a good idea because again, WW superstars are almost half naked, and it's a good idea to study anatomy on these type of bodies. So you don't need to search like completely naked references. You have WW superstars. So, um, and because of this, it's kind of uh, again, you can keep it PG. Uh, with the fact that they're like barely covered but still covered in a, in a fine way. So again, it's a good way to study things, study anatomy and actually like I definitely believe that we will continue this throughout the throughout um, a long period of time hopefully um, and we will get from the skull, from the anatomy of the face to the anatomy of the body when we're actually going to study the complex anatomy of the body of the body. So, but again, it's all in hopefully in the future. For now, um, again, um, then I switched to the creating process like last week, and I thought, okay. Um, now I get that we're not just going to sculpt things, but now we're going to integrate this sculpting into creating process. And uh, since uh, I knew where the painting where this uh, integrated studying will be placed in a creating process, I just basically place it in here because it's it, it, it's going to be just replaced by the sculpting instead of painting. So instead of going with um, uh, stage four of creating process, pass one and pass two in 2D, uh, for YouTube streams we're going to do all these things in 3D, um, which is the idea. Uh, which we we kind of did what's for CM Punk. We're actually going to get back to the CM Punk at some point because again, I want to like finish this project, um, or at least I will show you how I basically created it. So uh, for now, um, throughout last week, I changed plans again, which is completely normal because again, this is the way that you will find your balance. Uh, you need to think what works, what, what what doesn't work. For me personally, it didn't work. So when I started to work with the CM Punk's portrait, yes, uh, in a previous session, I didn't get proper results. I actually didn't like any type of results. I mean, um, towards the end of the previous session, I probably got to the point of this. Let me open it. Yeah, so I basically just kind of painted, like we analyzed CM Punk throughout a couple of sessions of the last week. Um, we analyzed like like what, what's going to be a scenario, what's going to be a reaction, and this is the way that I'm going to create portraits. But the problem is do, making these type of things during the streams kind of not necessarily entertaining and no one is going to watch it unless you will in, like in, attract viewers with your skills and with, with your portfolio or basically with your abilities. So because I don't have that yet, uh, I kind of started it, I guess, too early on, like to implement this on streams. I still don't have experience in this creating process. This is new to me, and I kind of thought to myself, okay, it could be a good idea to represent this as a creative process, like during the streams. But it turns out on Twitch it didn't work necessarily, and I kind of started it on YouTube last week. And throughout the week, I kind of figured out, okay, it doesn't work. I need to change the direction because I'm just going to stay frustrated and I'm going to work for super long and we're going to continue to create CM Punk like for a couple of months and it's going to be super long. It's not going to be interesting. So because of that, I thought long and hard and I actually changed a lot. So, and today be, I'm going to quickly talk about those changes. So the changes that I did, uh, instead of continuing to go to this, I, uh, by the way, I switched a bit. This is, by the way, the Emily project that we stopped with on the Twitch. Uh, I changed direction there too. So um, outside of the streams, I repainted CM Punk a little bit. I mean, uh, I completely decided to rebuild his kind of portrait. I decided to cle clean it up a little bit, make the hair work a little bit better, work on kind of uh, things. So I kind of just basically started to deal, uh, to work um, with, the, with the basic sketch and try to make the sketch look a little bit more presentable. But I still had troubles with uh, showing the form and the problem was in the fact that I didn't use any fundamentals that I um, a fundamental knowledge that I possess. So again, I have a lot of knowledge when it, like the theoretical knowledge when it comes down to the fundamentals and I already kind of showed it before. Again, I have all these, um, um, where is it? Yeah, all these art fundamentals put together. So I know that we have to learn like perspective form and color and I understand dimensions pretty well, primitives pretty well, anatomy kind of fine, still need needs a lot of work of course um, like I kind of understand how like light, light works and how light works in perspective and how like to control the form again theoretically all this information is there but 
uh, practically, and I understand how it works in practice, in theory, but when it comes down to using it in practice, I started to struggle. And the last couple of weeks, I basically struggled with that. And the reason for this change that I'm going to talk about um, is basically that I started to think, like, I started to understand that I'm definitely falling. Uh, when it comes down to the fundamentals, I'm just I'm I'm disregarding fundamentals completely. And ideally, this portrait needs to look much much better because of my knowledge but for some reason it looks awful and I spent like I don't know I spent two hours on redrawing it and it was a complete waste of time I mean I didn't get anywhere I changed a lot I just basically worked randomly without necessarily understanding it for him it was by the way a good beginning the fact that I started with the basic primitive but then I completely forgot about this basic primitive and just painting things randomly so so in the end, I figured out for myself, okay, I need to learn how to control fundamentals and start to implement fundamental, fundamentals right from the beginning. Because when working with Amelie Project on Twitch, it was completely kind of fine, although I disregarded fundamentals, it, it, it turns out pretty well. Um, the result I kind of liked. Uh, but with CM Punk, I completely hated the result and it basically frustrated me a lot because, like, I understand that I need to produce better results but I like again it's all about expectations you expect something from yourself certain things you expect from yourself like you have like you compare the, the the amount of knowledge that you possess with the skills that you have and when skills are not um, basically equal or even close to your anticipation and um, um, and to your expectations you basically getting super disappointed and you started to lose uh, belief in you like uh, you start you start to basically yeah basically lose belief in yourself so you start you st uh, you begin to um, doubt yourself doubt your skills doubt your knowledge and it's basically kind of a crazy psychological stuff that's never a good thing to have and you need to find a way to get out of this like this psychological state and find where is the problem and I like I spent a couple of days to kind of figure out the problem and I did like through, anal through analyzing this I kind of figured out okay now I know where is the problem and now I need to figure out how to adapt uh, to the new stuff. So, um, in the end, uh, I'm not going to bother with this, uh, I'm not going to bother you, uh, bore you with this, but um, in the end, I basically figured out, okay, what I need to do is I need to stop pursuing these projects during the streams that way and instead focus on, refocus everything on fundamentals, on things that I need to practice right now before I will be able to create proper portraits. And I will continue to work on those portraits outside of the streams to basically not stop working but still continue to work. But basically using streams instead of producing a final projects or working on projects which basically puts additional pressure that I'm already pushing on my like putting on myself but it basically kind of doubles or able to, or even triples this pressure and because of this the the more pressure you will get on yourself and putting yourself the more disappointed you will be if you're not going to deliver uh, again it all depends with like on uh, what type of expectations you um, putting on yourself and I'm actually expecting a lot of a lot for myself and um, and because I, I have a lot like crazy expectations from myself because of the burden of the knowledge that I have it basically makes me crazy sometimes when I'm not delivering um, I'm too harsh on myself I am I'm I am my worst critic personally and I know the, the we, we have artists like this of course uh, I'm, not, I'm not the only one uh, but this like self-criticism could either make you or break you and in order for it not to break you you need to understand how to work with within uh, uh, these elements uh, when you're basically facing yourself and you need to fight psychologically with your uh, self-critic I don't know it's like two different persons like uh, I don't know it, it's weird um, again, let's just not talk about it, uh, because again, there's a lot of things to talk about, there's a lot of things to do. So, and while doing this, I basically got super frustrated, I tried a lot of things, I figured out, okay, I definitely am not thinking about the anatomy of the eye, I'm not thinking about anything, I'm just drawing things, I'm just placing things, experimenting with things, and it's not freaking working. It looks a little bit better than it were, like looked before, but still, 
the the main part is missing that I'm disregarding fundamentals. I'm disregarding the fact that this nose needs to basically be constructed as a basic primitive and then using this information I would work with form. Instead I'm just like winning the form instead of actually trying to make it right. I'm just trying to randomly place things and look what it's going to look in the end. It's a it's a wrong way to work with things. So and again I'm just reworking the eyes, I'm trying to figure out what I'm missing and again it, this is just a frustration speaking. I mean like I completely messed up the eyes, I completely ruined them from the beginning and in the end I like end up with the worst result that I had before. And I got super mega frustrated and I figured out what, what was the problem and now I am ready to basically uh, solve this problem. So it turns out that again uh, I'm basically disregarding fundamentals which is the crucial crucial problem that I need to work with and instead of it I decided okay now instead of working on creating projects and working on portraits uh, on Twitch and on YouTube I'm going to refocus on working with fundamentals. Um, and since working on Twitch is a little bit more freedom because it's it's less oriented on a certain topic, we can talk about anything there except religion and politics. Um, so on YouTube it's a little bit different because YouTube is basically WWE oriented, and on Twitch I basically switched to reanalyzing perspective, which, exa which exactly that I'm doing. I'm revisiting primitives. I'm basically going under re-understanding the primitives to understand that you can build everything from one big primitive. So you can build a sphere from the cube. You can build a uh, cylinder from the cube. I'm working right now uh, with boolean operations out there with overall operations What type of operations or uh, to modify primitives you could perform on them to make them? Uh, a little bit different. It's it's all needs to be done in order to learn how to how to actually utilize um, This information and not disregard it during the creation process, which is again my problem I'm just disregarding these fundamentals. I understand them, but I'm not using them and this is the problem. So, and I spent a decent amount of like basically hours to figure this out. And um, once this understanding work was clear, I knew that I need to start to work on primitives uh, on Twitch and basically Twitch streams. Now I, I I switched completely into the educational streams when we just basically studying uh, like perspective like from the beginning. For now again, we're working with. Uh, figuring out the basic primitives and performing basic operations with them. The next stage is going to be uh, trying to um, work with the, with the perspective, so putting together these two things, dimensions and primitives. And in the end, once those two will be checked uh, and will work fine, we'll, we will uh, go into the a little bit more complex subjects and we will learn how to simplify them and then put the complex subjects instead uh, or inside of basic primitives which will train me to work properly utilizing fundamentals instead of disregarding them so this is the idea so again um, for YouTube it's a little bit differently because again for YouTube I can't do the same thing I can't just work with primitives because it's it, I, for that I'm actually created a um, uh, like planning a completely different um, kind of a section on YouTube which is uh, K2AA Sandbox which will work with the same type of stuff we will work with the basic primitives and reanalyzing complex subjects based on basic primitives which hopefully soon will start on YouTube uh, we will continue on YouTube right now I have like three episodes and there's pre-intro intro and uh, I still need to launch a intro episode with K2AA Sandbox and after this will be done we will finally start to produce a uh, uh, episodes for kind of complete beginners how to perceive uh, complex and semi-complex subjects into a basic primitives and think about them in a simple way because this will help you to uh, basically extend your um, I forget how it's called in English 3D understanding of the world, so you will start to see things in 3D in your brain. Uh, you will start to analyze things like you see through them. So you, you will basically become a uh, living X-ray vision. Uh, I mean, X-ray machine that will look at some type of subject and will see how it's constructed, which is the whole idea to basically kind of 
built this understanding in your brain in order for you to recreate any type of subject that you want from any type of angle in perspective and this is in the end we'll we'll get there but for now again I can't do the same for WWE, for, uh, WWE seems, uh, streams uh, and instead I kind of thought okay what I need to do what I can do for WWE streams to still provide a better visuals than just creating slowly projects and drawing CM Punk for two months uh, which is not going to be an entertaining at all and find a way to do something that will produce a little bit more consistent results like for instance this week we're working with CM Punk next week we if we will finish with CM Punk this week we will work on AJ so now at least we will switch each week uh, between different characters and at some point we'll start to move forward because right now we're kind of standing still uh, because there's no like no traction I mean there, there's just like we're still working on same punk throughout like from the beginning of September and it's already uh, like getting getting closer to the middle of uh, October and we're still working on same punk which is kind of frustrating personally and of course no one is going to watch that uh, and this is all because I'm still adjusting I'm still figuring out what, what I need to do and how exactly I need to do it so because of this uh, what I basically figured out for myself uh, to do something similar that I did for Twitch by int integrating a perspective, like revisiting a fundamentals perspective. Um, I integrated the same thing for uh, similar thing for YouTube, uh, and from now on, on these streams, we will do this. We're basically going to focus on painting only for now and sometimes on sculpting again we will kind of balance things a little bit for now i'm going to focus on on painting uh and i will get back to sculpting uh once um, once we will get uh, like get back to, to creating a actual project so for now um uh, because the sculpting is going to be a part of creating process because i don't see uh like the need um okay let's just is right. Uh, I don't see the need in uh, sculpting this in in a 3D to analyze it if I can uh, just basically analyze it from the photo uh, by just basically drawing by looking at it. So yesterday, um, unfortunately, I I wasn't I didn't capture the creation process of this. So because of this, we need to completely redo it, which is completely fine. It's going to be a good practice. So yesterday, basically, I just decided, okay, I need to take a photo of the scene punk that I like the best, um, and use it as just basically a studying portrait. So from now on, these streams are going to study portraits instead of basically creating them on my own. So I'm just going to take a photo, I'm going to, and I'm going to study this photo. And we're also going to study this photo in color right away. So instead of working on black and white um, image, like uh, most of the people do, we will start to work with color right away, which will compli oh, like complicate things a lot. Because again, I don't see color without values so values and colors they're kind of similar to me in terms of like the, like in order to work with color harmonies you need to start to work on color as fast as possible and the only way to do this is to perceive value as the part of the color and know what exactly value represents in color and and we will get back to that uh, at some point for now again it's just, it's going to be a little bit more practice oriented i'm just going to draw based on photos uh, I'm not going to create any type of different things into into portrait I'm not going to make them my own I'm just going to strictly draw from the photos and that way just simply study um, before that I didn't want to do that because I thought nah, why why would I need why wh why would I do this if I would if I could just basically create my own per portrait which is going to be much more compelling but at the same time again as I figured out that by doing so I will miss on a lot of fundamentals and I will spend too much time to create one freaking portrait when right here I spent on this couple of hours and I created pretty decent result already so it's a little bit again uh, and the more practice I will get in rendering the better it will get again this is not finished again ideally I would spend more and more much more time on this um, but we're going to redraw it from the beginning I believe uh, I actually don't know what to do in here like should we continue it from here and basically polish it or should we start from the beginning and redraw it completely because again unfortunately I didn't uh, capture a creating process and 
the whole point of this is kind of capture the creating process and showcase this creating process, like how I'm going about this creating process. But unfortunately, I completely skipped it. I kind of, I, I actually didn't thought that I would get to this point. I just started with like with basic blobs. I started to work, by the way, with black and white. And the reason uh, why, uh, like you can see that I started with black and white by this color. So um, if I would started it with with the color right away, we wouldn't see uh, this orangish kind of color uh, in in the hair because it's not present in here at all. Uh, the reason was it, like why this is present is because I basically kind of created thing in black and white, uh, somewhat like this. Uh, and then once I basically worked on black and white picture, I decided, okay, I need to color it. So, and then I just basically created a separate layer, uh, put it on a co in a color mod and basically over painted it on top with, the, with one shade of color. Um, that was pretty close to what like the Simpunks color. And in the end, I got a pretty bad result. So because of this, it could be a good idea to actually redraw it from the beginning, because right here, like, we need to re redo a lot of work because of the fact that we messed up with the colors and also proportionally it's of course it's not super accurate I mean I worked with this portrait without these things so without the guides uh, yeah I just worked on, on like on eye um, and uh, it's a good way to kind of study proportions but in most cases our main idea right here not to study proportions but instead study the form and study rendering techniques and because of this I want to uh, use guides to make this work a little bit faster and a little bit less proportionally oriented. So our goal is not to be picture perfect with proportions and learn how to work with proportions because again it's all about measuring. Uh, instead of it I created this simple um, kind of grid which is not a regular grid but actually it has diagonals which will help us to re uh, like analyze things a little bit better. Uh, think about uh, not only a straight lines uh, but actually think about the diagonal lines that will help us to uh, re-analyze uh, proportions in a little bit different way. Um, so I believe th this type of grid is much more efficient than just a regular uh, kind of cubical grid. Uh, so like the triangle grid is better than just a quad grid. Um, so and Yes, so we, we're going to redraw it completely from the, like today. We will start with, with just the regular paint. Um, I, I don't believe that we will get that far. Hopefully, yeah, uh, hopefully today in an hour we will get somewhere. Um, if I'm not going to be super slow and I'm not going to overcomplicate things. Um, and last and next session, which is again tomorrow, hopefully we will finish the Punk. Um, and next week we will start with AJ. So uh, this is the idea because again that way these these streams are going to be much faster they're going to be a little bit more content I don't know there's more content that's going to be present in terms of visuals which is the whole idea speak about WWE or talk about WWE and at the same time provide some visuals which is the idea so yeah again we will start to work with CM Punk in a bit so, um, this is basically the change that I will take from now on. So, for now, we're going to just basically draw portraits this way. We're going to create a photo, like take a photo, uh, crop it in the way that we want it, uh, in a portrait compositionally, and then we will basically create a quick grid, and then we will start to, we will recreate the same grid, the same size from the right, uh, and we will just basically going to work on this and uh, like in terms of the pipeline I will revisit it multiple times and it might change how exactly we're going to study but again for now let's just continue so go let's just close unneeded windows yeah let's just open WWE week thing um, and it's time to discuss WWE week so last week on WWE <laughs> Uh, or this week on WWE, including, by the way, uh, the end of the last week, which was uh, a Super Showdown. So, it's time to talk about the things that transpired on Super Showdown. So, uh, first thing that I will do, I'm going to quickly uh, go over my predictions again. Uh, in previous uh, 
kind of session I uh, made my predictions who is going to win who is going who's not going to win and uh, I actually was right in most of the cases so um, cruiserweight championship Cedric Alexander versus Buddy Murphy because they were in Australia I 100% put my money on Buddy Murphy and I actually want him to win and he won it was the best match on the pay-per-view I actually I mean like the uh, storytelling wise and overall uh, I actually liked it the best it, it had a, an awesome dynamic it, it wasn't boring in any way and it was like almost a perfect match so mm, and uh, it was awesome I am definitely happy for Buddy Murphy uh, now let's see where exactly Buddy Murphy will go in 205 Live because for me personally Cedric Alexander didn't mm, make justice to the title for some reason or, or didn't give justice to the title it didn't uh, he didn't gave the title the I don't know he didn't work for some reason I don't know. He, it's like in the time when Se where when Cedric Alexander was a champion. It's like it's it's like the championship wasn't existed, didn't exist. It was it was weird. So hopefully, Buddy Murphy with his intensity, with his like overconfidence, will bring the intensity to the two hundred five life, and and will actually make this a worthy title. Um, and it's actually going to be much more interesting. So Buddy Murphy definitely works again. Buddy Murphy is super awesome. So Asuka and Naomi fought Iconics. Right here, of course, it was pretty clear that Iconics will win because it was Australia. Although I kind of doubt myself that uh, they could give an Asuka and Naomi kind of mm, win. But again, it's a freaking Australia and Iconics should win. Uh, it was weird, by the way, that there was not that big of a reaction um, on Iconics. And the reason why, why, I guess, it's because it was the worst... Um, um, so it was an open area, uh, open arena, and because of the fact that this was an open arena, it had pretty bad acoustics. Usually, these type of arenas, the open arenas, they ha if they have a bad acoustics, instead of going in into the center and picking up like by the microphones and the, and the um, superstars, instead it goes somewhere. In, in the sky because of the uh, fact that stadium stadium is stadium is open and it basically had the same problem it, it was pretty bad acoustics and because of this the energy of the matches were, were, were like were pretty low usually the energy of the crowd makes the event and in this particular instance it didn't work so it was kind of boring. So Asuka and Naomi basically kind of fought the Iconics and of course Iconics won. That was pretty cool. Again, I definitely kind of was right in the fact that Iconics will win because again, this is a freaking Australia and they're from there. Again, Buddy Murphy won, Iconics won. Uh, in terms of the SmackDown uh, Tag Team Championships, uh, the New Day versus The Bar. Again, I, I hate The Bar at this point. I don't know why. They just don't work. You need to separate them and give the single push to Cesaro and single push to Sheamus or create some type of an interesting storyline by utilizing them. They don't work in tag team for some reason. I don't know why. they kind of perfect on paper together, but in, in reality they're not delivering because I believe they both think that they're the best and they stop delivering because they stop trying and it's like, I don't know, it's just psychologically psychological. I mean, if you will put two awesome wrestlers together they will understand that you don't need to try very much and you can basically lower your uh, kind of energy and start to produce a decent results. And this is exactly what I believe happened with the, with the bar. They just not trying. They just basically winning it and going with the flow without necessarily putting 100%. Uh, like. The match, uh, the single match of the Cesaro was a couple of weeks ago. It was actually awesome. I actually saw when that Cesaro actually started to try something new and started to grow. Um, again, they need to go in singles. Uh, they don't have future if you, if you will continue to push them in in the tag team. And because of this, I definitely wanted for New Day to keep titles. Although, again, at this point, I'm not that fan of the New Day either because they're kind of I don't know. I wouldn't say that they're outdated. They still work. But I want for the titles to, to go somewhere else and, and basically get the division 
going instead of just keeping the titles in the, on the top team. It's just not working. So um, again, with Daniel uh, Bryan and the Messi, it was clear because the number one, like because of the fact that winner is going to be a number one contender because yeah, the Daniel Bryan 100% should win. So it was pretty clear. And what's happened in the SmackDown? We're going to talk in a bit. So John Cena and Bobby Lashley against Kevin Owens and Elias. I knew that John Cena and Bobby Lashley will win, but I kind of hope that Kevin Owens and Elias will win because I I, I wanted for Kevin Owens and Elias to continue this awesome feud, uh, not not the feud against Bobby Lashley, but the like I like them as a tag team. They have an awesome chemistry, and. Um, Kevin Owen gets injured because of this stupid Bobby Lashley. Damn it! Okay, we will get to that. So, I'm super disappointed. I pissed off on Bobby Lashley because Kevin Owens is freaking awesome. And because of this, he had got his first kind of serious energy, serious injury in his career. And he will get away, like, basically will disappear for a such uh, so, 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 so certain period of time and I'm super disappointed. So again, right here I knew that I'm basically uh, uh, going to lose this bet, uh, but again, John Cena and Bobby Lashley won and Kevin Owens and Elias like kind of lost. And John Cena's hair, come on! Freaking JBL. Okay, whatever, we'll, we'll talk about it later. So, um, SmackDown Women's Championship, Becky Lynch against Charlotte. Again, I knew that Becky Lynch will win. The question was how exactly she's going to win. And of course, she won by DQ, which was pretty cool. I mean, or not cool, I don't know. In the end, the match was pretty bad. I mean, uh, they actually fought on SmackDown and they pr they they showed much better match than they showed uh, on a Super Showdown. So the cool thing is that they feud the, their feud continues and it's awesome. So Ronda Rousey and Bella Twins versus R R Riot Squad. Um, no, wait a minute. They actually lost or they won? I r seriously? Oh yeah, so yeah, Ronda Rousey and Bella Twins of course won, uh, and what happened on Raw we're going to talk about in a minute, uh, but again, um, I wanted for Riot Squad to win, but I knew that Ronda Rousey and Bella Twins never going to lose because of the fact that they're kind of losing, con lost, uh, lost constantly the last couple of weeks, so it was kind of obvious. So when when it comes down to the WWE Championship and Jay Styles versus say Samoa Joe, uh, again I'm continuing to put my money on Samoa Joe because I want him to win the freaking title and again I don't have anything against AJ Styles, I just want for AJ Styles to rest because he is freaking burned out, he's holding a title for 300 plus days, it's just super crazy, he's going to kill himself if he will continue and he will shorten his career that way. I don't want that for to happen. So because of this, hopefully Samojo at some point will win the title. But Samojo's knee popped during the match. I don't know if it if it's the actual injury of its or if it's a kind of a just just a story, but it seemed like it actually popped truly because during the smackdown Samojo couldn't face properly uh, Hardy and match basically got stopped during a no contest. So because of this, I believe the Samoa Joe is actually kind of injured his knee. Uh, there's a good probability. Um, so he kind of played it weak, like it was a like story, but I believe the injury is true. Uh, but again, I'm not sure. Uh, the Shield versus Braun Strowman and Dolph Ziggler and McIntyre. Um, I knew that Shield will win because again, Braun Strowman and Dolph Ziggler and McIntyre, they're just kind of falling apart. Like, at the beginning they worked pretty fine, but right now it's the weird things that are happening with this team. Braun Strowman getting super, super leader, leader-ish. He's kind of pushing them around and Dolph Ziggler is kind of, I don't know, like a weak link. And Drew McIntyre is getting super cocky, and it's it's weird dynamic right now in there. I don't know, I don't like where it's going. So, mm, whatever. Um, so, The Undertaker versus Triple H, of course, uh, in the Triple H's corner, we saw Shawn Michaels and The Undertaker's corner, uh, the Kane Warp was present. Uh, right here, I actually thought that Undertaker will win, although I believe that Triple H should win, but again, right here, right here I just basically bet on the wrong horse in terms of the fact that I kind of thought that since Undertaker is always winning, he had to win, but apparently it didn't happen. And it was a reason for that, because now this feud will continue uh, into something much more interesting, which we will get to. So, again, right now, uh, everything building in, uh, to two pay-per-views. Uh, the Evolution pay-per-view, which is going to be a full women pay-per-view. Um, 
with no men. Uh, again, uh, the men will probably be in an evolution, but they're going to play as managers. Uh, with Crown Jewels, which is again is a contrast because they're going into the Saudi Arabia again and they kind of have troubles with the women. Um, and because of this, we're not going to see any women on Crown Jewels, I believe, uh, again, because it's Saudi Arabia. It was the pro like the problem with Royal Rumble. Um, and right now we basically have a um, two directions. Uh, the storylines are like building towards evolution and towards Crown Jewels at the same time. So because of this, it's going to be kind of a weird thing, like the build up to two pay different pay-per-views with the different that know, divisions, women's division and men's division. It's just weird, but whatever. Um, let's just go with a quick overview of the shows. So, uh, the first we will quickly overview Raw. Uh, I, I don't believe that titles are changed. Usually, if titles change, I'm changing things. Um, like, I still don't, don't know what's, what happened with Matt Hardy. People are saying that he's finished his career. I still don't believe that because, I mean... Uh, until WWE will say that he's lost, like, he actually finished his career, I'm not going to remove him from here. Uh, so, uh, we probably could remove him from here in the injury status. Uh, yep, let's just do that. It could be a good idea. Let's just remove him into an injury status. Uh, status. And Bray Wyatt right now is just unknown. So, for now, let's just keep them, keep him there too. Because he's just disappeared. Maybe they're rethinking, uh, rethinking in the story with him. Where to put him, whatever. Um, I love Bray Wyatt. It, I hate when they're misusing him. He has a enormous potential but it's pretty hard to realize this potential because people are not taking him seriously and his kind of I don't know super over philosophical guy and philosophy is something that people don't like they want to relax drink beer or other fluids and relax and have a good time and not necessarily think about things um, and Bray Wyatt kind of sometimes creates things to think about. So yeah, uh, Raw. So what happened on Raw? It, it, like, um, um, pum pum pum. So yeah, uh, in terms of the Crown Jewel, the only thing that I will say is the fact that John Cena is basically getting older, and I guess his hair are beginning to get got gray, and because of this, he started. Um, to dye his hair as JBL does, and it looks awful. I guess you need to adapt to it. Um, I'm a believer, if you will get with an age, keep age the way that the age ages you, whatever. It's it's the weirdest thing ever. So, man, again, if you get, if you, if you will get a gray hair, keep it. Don't try to cover it. It's going to look pathetic. If you getting older, don't put a like crazy amount of makeup on yourself to look young it's stupid so just just be yourself i mean i i, I truly I, I true believer i true believer in natural things and uh, if things are looking like looking natural it it it's just worth worse look looks the worst ever so don't try to be younger than you are basically uh, you can basically i don't know behave younger but don't try to look younger it's just not going to look fine. So yeah, John Cena is definitely make the, the wrong choice. Uh, but at the same time, I get why he's doing this because he is kind of into movies right now, and he needs to stay relevant. If he in, if he is going to grow a uh, basically a, a gray hair, it's going to ruin his career. Maybe potential. Who knows? Again, uh, it's a different choice. Um, so. Uh, Ross started with Triple H and uh, Shawn Michaels uh, reunion in DX, which is a awesome thing. I truly, um, I'm super happy about it. So it's going to be an interesting to see what is going to go. Um, so DX now is back. DX, DX, uh, DX is now back. Uh, so Shawn Michaels and Triple H is going to fight. Shawn Michaels is basically back which is super awesome. Uh, it's going to be an interesting where exactly Shawn Michaels will go. Um, so, um, in terms of the matches, um, I already talked about it before. I knew that, that this match is not going to be the end. I knew that at some point they are either going to face together, face each other, like Brother Distractions against the X, or Triple H is going to fight, um, or 
Shawn Michaels was going to find Undertaker. So, uh, and of course, there was a pretty interesting surprise that this match was no no disqualification match. So in the end, like the match was pretty hectic and it was super long and it was kind of boring, but at the same time, it had like kind of cool moments. Um, so, yeah. Um, so yeah, basically. DX versus the Brothers or Destruction is going to be at some point, which is cool. Uh, then we had a match Lashley versus Owens, when basically in which Owens got injured. When apparently in a in a in a time when Bobby Lashley is basically hit his knees uh, on a ring post, the steel steel post, um, and probably at that time because Bobby Lashley is freak of nature and he can't control himself so <laughs> uh, and throughout the whole match Ra Leo Rush uh, provided us with a pretty weird comments uh, which was kind of uh, annoying um, Ronda Razi uh, and of course Leslie Leslie won Ronda Razi and Bella Twins faced Riot Squad it was basically a rematch rematch from the pay-per-view and guess what uh, the Bellas now turned uh, heal and basically attacked Ronda. It was pretty interesting. I mean, people definitely didn't saw it coming, hopefully. And it was kind of interesting thing to see because I don't know why exactly they did it. Um, probably it's going to build into some type of a triple threat or feud. I mean, like the Ballas versus Ronda Rousey and Ronda Rousey is going to kill them, whatever, something like this. I don't know. It doesn't matter. So uh, it's actually going to be kind of an interesting, uh, like, to see where it's going to go, though. Um, like, do Ronda Rousey needs to find a partner? Probably it's going to be Natalia, and then they're going to fight Ballas and and uh, and uh, on Evolution. We'll see. We'll see where it's going to go. Um, also, the state of the Liv Morgan. I completely forgot to talk about this in the previous uh, streams. That, that the fact that Liv Morgan uh, got a, a pretty serious concussion, I believe. Although, because they allowed her to fight on pay per view and on Raw next. Uh, in a couple of days, uh, it turns out that this concussion wasn't serious, but still, it was pretty kind of crazy when uh, Brie Bella basically uh, kicked her in the face with her leg. What? Whatever. My English today is bad, sorry for that. So, uh, yeah, the mixed tag build up continues. B BNB, Bailey and Baller faced Mahalisha. BNB won, of course. Um, uh, WWE announced a World Cup uh, that is going to transpire during the Crown Jewels. Um, uh, because of this, it was created a battle royal with Baron Corbin and lots of weird wrestlers. Uh, and the Conquistador, which turns out was a Kurt Angle, and uh, he won this battle royal. And now we're going to see in the World Cup uh, John Cena, um, which he got there automatically. Um, Jeff Hardy from SmackDown, um, and um, uh, Kurt Angle, and probably somewhere else. I forgot about it. We're going to talk about the actual match once the full card is going to be uh, established. So then Naya faced Amber Moon, and Am Amber Moon won, which was interesting. Uh, she won by countout, so kind of cool. Uh, Trish versus Alexa, uh, I mean the Alexa Bliss. Um, uh, started like continues their feud uh, at the beginning uh, their match was uh, set in card as one-on-one -on -one, but apparently because Alexa and Trish might not provide a good main event uh, they decided to put them together with Trish and Lita um, uh, versus Alexa and, J and Mickey James so before that Mickey James is supposed to have fight Trish one-on-one -on -one and uh, well no Mickey James is supposed to fight Lita one-on-one -on -one and Trish had to fight Alexa one-on-one, -on -one, but instead of it, I guess now it's going to be a tag team uh, two-on-two, which, I don't know, kind of weird, but still, we'll see where it goes. Um, uh, Bobby Root and Chad Gable faced Ascension, they will they continue the feud against Ascension, the Ascension, and uh, they won again, Chad Gable uh, stole the Bobby Root's uh, Thunder, <laughs> which happens a lot lately, um, and after this match AOP got involved after it and basically kind of sent a message to both tag teams um, that they're basically going to dominate 
uh, hopefully it will go into something interesting. So Paul Heyman entered the battle, uh, entered the ring, uh, and not the ring necessarily under the Titan Tron, um, and he kind of provided a pretty weird and pointless talk. Like, don't forget about Brock Lesnar and, and his UFC training. Um, he's still relevant. Don't forget about him, and kind of plug. Uh, uh, plugs the Crown Jewels and Triple Threat match that is going to transpire out there against Roman Reigns, Brock Lesnar and somewhere else. Someone else. I forgot who, who exactly is going to fight. Seriously, I forgot. Brock Lesnar, Roman Reigns, who else? Ah, Braun Strowman, yeah. So this Triple Threat is going to be pushed. Um, and then we saw a McIntyre, Ziggler, and Strowman versus the Shield, where the sh where the Shield lost in the end of the show, and the show basically ended that way. So go continue to the SmackDown. Um, we're probably not going to work to today a lot because I for 30 minutes I talked about one thing, and now we're talking about the other thing. Um, so with SmackDown, uh, things are weird. Uh, this SmackDown actually was pretty bad. I mean, uh, again, right now. There's no place in card for any other teams. Uh, every push goes into Crown Jewels and into the WWE Evolution, and because of this, the cards are pretty limited. So all time is basically spent on the relevant storylines, and no one is going to create any type of time for unrelated storylines. And because of that, it's kind of weird. So um, basically what we have is... Um, uh, show started with SmackDown Women's Championship uh, rematch with Becky Lynch versus Charlotte. Again, this match was freaking awesome, and it was resulted in a double count out. So it was non-definitive winner. I mean, in terms of the fact that uh, uh, Becky still uh, retained her title. Um, uh, and in the end of this match, uh, Charlotte speared uh, Becky through the LED board under the titan drawn and basically broke it and she kind of injured her wrist and elbow it was pretty severe and we don't know like to which extent becky uh was hurt it was kind of um, uh, irrelevant at that time because um we're not going to see becky until the next next week probably but we're definitely going to see charlotte like this they fighting in a mixed stack challenge and because of this they kind of focused on Charlotte only and kind of forgot about Becky at, uh, at all, it was weird. Um, again, Charlotte again stalls the Becky's thunder, it's it's the story of her life. So, uh, Hardy versus Joe fought, again, no contest because of the knee, knee injury for the Samoa Joe, he basically couldn't even stand. I don't know if it's a story or not. It might be the story still, but I believe that Samoa Joe is truly hurt. So then we saw Miz TV, uh, when, where basically Miz uh, invited Styles and Brian to talk about stuff. Um, and it was kind of cool, I mean, overall segment was pretty interesting and Miz is always awesome on the mic. And it was pretty good response from the audience, from the, from the Brian and Styles too. Um, in the end, it was kind of like Miss tried to create a tension between those two because this is something that will create the main event. And Miss, Miss definitely was kind of bitter in terms of the fact that he's not in, in this uh, equation. Um, but I believe it will get there, then in the end we're probably going to see Styles versus Brian versus The Miz and Triple Threat. It's coming there. Especially if Joe is not going to be able to fight because of the knee injury. Uh, or, yeah. So yeah, Styles and Shelton, uh, yeah, because of this, this, by the way, might be a, a storyline, the knee injury for the Samoa Joe, um, because they needed to explain somehow why exactly Styles is fighting Brian on the next pay-per-view when the feud of the Joe and Styles is not over, so because of this, they might create this additional story to kind of pull away the intention, attention from Samoa Joe. Um, so style, but still keep relevant the whole kind of story. Um, kind of put it on pause, refocus it, and then bring it bring it back. Um, then we saw Styles versus Shelton right after it, and uh, Styles won. Um, yeah, it was pretty cool. Pretty cool. Uh, so then we saw the Mil Milwaukee um, the one night in Milwaukee resolution. Uh, basically, uh, as I said, Lana basically thank, thank them in this video. I want you to thank 
uh, like to say thank thank you for everything that you did for Rusev and etc and etc and then basically Aiden English tried to kiss Lana but Lana kind of rejected him and uh, in the end they basically showed the whole video so now there's nothing out there um, uh, the only cool thing that Aiden said that basically um, if you will get tired uh, from Rusev days um, come back to the Aiden night uh, something like this. So basically right now we're going to hopefully cheer Aiden Knight and Roots of Day and they're going to feud against each other. It's going to be a pretty interesting one. Again, I'd rather see them fight each other than go together and attack team. They don't work. Um, for me personally. Rey Mysterio is back! Um, uh, so yeah, Rey Mysterio returning next week is going to fight Shinsuke Nakamura. And also next week is going to uh, bring back the evolution because the next week is 1000 episode of Smackdown. So it's kind of a celebration, so which is going to be cool. Big Show fought against Randy Orton. Uh, Big Show return. Uh, he got much slower because again the age is going to him, and also the fact that he under underwent surgery after last time we saw him in uh, on a ring in a ring against Braun Strowman in a steel cage or Hell in a Cell. I don't remember. So Randy won by putting a thumb in the eye and then performing an RKO. That was actually a pretty cool one. And that's kind of covers the week. Uh, again, I tried to cover it in an hour. I kind of went super super fast, but still. Um, so yeah, this is covers the week. Um, yeah. Then, by the way, we went through the tag team, mixed tag team. Uh, I forgot to put the results there. Let's remember what 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 transpires on uh, there. So, Charlotte. Charlotte and uh, Styles. Versus, uh, yeah, I, I, one thing that I will that, that I remember that Charlotte fought AJ Styles against uh, Fabulous Truth, uh, Carmella and r Truth, which is by the way an awesome team. They work awesome together, and it, it was a main event. And uh, Charlotte and Styles, of course, won. Um, Although that was a pretty weird main event, I mean, the last week I liked more than this week, but still, it was pretty cool. Um, and the first match was, let me remember... Oh. Finn Balor. b, &B. Uh, Finn Balor and Bailey versus Braun Strowman and uh, Amber Moon. Yep. And of course Braun Strowman the number one. So uh, I believe that though. I, uh, I'm not 100% sure about it. Yes, they definitely won. So yeah, this is kind of the results of this. So yeah, let's just finish on that note. Uh, and uh, yeah, we kind of finished overviewing the WWE week. Let's just switch to, let's just save this. Uh, again, tomorrow we will continue to talk about 205 Live, NXT, and uh, Mayan Classic, and uh, the rest of stuff. Um, maybe we'll get some news about something. So yeah, let's just switch to the creative part now and continue with the CM Punk. Or should I say, start with CM Punk because again, I kind of switched. I don't believe that I will need this anymore, so let's just close things. So again, we're going to draw CM Punk right from the beginning. We're not going to um, paint CM Punk, like continue to paint this. Uh, it was just a test. Uh, I needed to see if I'm going to be able to do this and actually produce a decent results, and apparently I did. So. Um, I just wanted to see, uh, like, am I still capable of doing this, or I lost it? Because again, I rarely study things like this, I'm usually just focusing on creating projects, like big projects, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not used to studying things like this. If I'm studying something I'm studying is um, during the actual creating process. And usually it's not working like this. I'm trying to analyze the photo, I'm trying to understand how it looks, I'm not just painting from the photo. So for me it's not necessarily a good way to study, it's not efficient. 
but in this particular instance it's going to be efficient because of the fact that we're going to focus on rendering techniques and on understanding the form. So the more we will draw a human form, the more we will understand how this form wraps around, how light bends over this form, how it interacts with the form, and in the end we will get some type of a kind of intuitive way to work with the form and it will help us to build uh, the skills um, the pure skills um, so right now I'm not necessarily integrating the step-by-step -step way of creating things uh, I'm starting to work with the shapes right away so instead of working with the construction and drawing sketches and working with proportions I'm going to use this um, grid to work with proportions to basically measure them measure them um, and put them together to simplify a little bit uh, because again my focus right here not on sketch but instead on a painting sketch so we're going to work with the val uh, not with the values but with 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 colors we're going to work with shapes uh, putting basic basic shapes together and then creating a form based on those shapes so for now we're going to focus on probably on the silhouette um, I don't know uh, I don't have any definitive like step-by-step -step process for the studying because it's freaking studying so first let's just quickly create a uh, cool thing so we're going to create a couple of new windows oh snap not the new creator new view yeah we're going to create a couple of new views uh, for me this is a new way to work with things uh, usually I'm not doing this uh, but I know a lot of artists doing this type of thing they're basically working on On projects like this they are creating uh, two separate windows or multiple separate windows and using those windows to uh, produce a different results to see things from far if you will get into details too too much and etc so for that we will create a three windows hopefully it's not going to affect our performance in terms of the CPU um, yeah, you will probably not going to be able to view it. Yeah, we need to make it. I don't know, maybe we need to make them smaller though. They don't have to be big. The main idea here is to put them like make them visible like this and what type of changes we will apply to them I will show in a bit I believe we're actually able now in Creator to save the window layouts so this is something that we need to think about like um, yeah so I never did this so this is the first time that I'm doing this this way Oh snap, that was a bad idea. Um, what I want is to, yeah. So again, the reason for those two, uh, first one we're going to use as a scale element and as black and white. So again, let's just bring back our first kind of example. Um, so we're going to, of course, most operations we're going to perform here. We're going to draw looking here and paint right here. So we're basically going to do that. Um, this is here to provide us with zoom. So yeah, we're going to draw and paint on 25 plus. This is, by the way, a 50%. This is 100%. So we're actually going to try to work with the brushes too in here. So this is something that I need to learn how to do too, how to use my newly created brushes that I never used before in painting, uh, just created them um, and like apply it to the actual creating process. So it actually kind of works pretty cool. I mean, um, this is the way to practice not only the rendering, but actually the, mat the instruments that you're working with. Um, so continue. Ugh. Again, today's session is going to be a kind of a slow start. 
Um, so the next thing we will do though is we're going to um, so here we're going to use it for mirroring so this is going to be a opposite way for us to working with the mirrors so instead of constantly mirroring in here uh, we are going to put a additional window with mirror in order to see are we right or are we wrong because sometimes we're going to forget about mirroring and mirroring will help us to re-evaluate re the proportions and, um, and values too so the second thing that we're going to create is in here and we're going to apply soft proofing because this is the only way how I found we will be able to make this black and white without applying it to the other projects because again every change that we will do with this project is going to affect these two too so if we're going to get rid of the these things um, they will be able to yeah it will affect all these parts mm. So yeah, the only thing that's not applicable to every project is soft proofing thing. It's kind of specific for every pro for every window. So it's still kind of a glitchy a bit. I mean, in terms of the fact that right now for some reason we got black and white again. So we need to reswitch it, reswitch re it, put soft proofing on and then off again in order to bring back the same for, for this. So yeah, we're going to use this window to uh, look at things in the mirror instead of remirroring multiple times. Although we're, go we're still going to use mirroring in here, but again, it's always a good thing if it's present in here. It's going to help us to re-evaluate re re proportions. Uh, when it comes down to this, it's a, it's a good way to look at the black and white results. Um, and in most cases, this is exactly why I'm like the how I'm going to use it. I mean. I'm, I'm, I'm going to work with colors and I'm going to look at the black and white versions and see where I'm missing things, what I'm not missing. So again, um, it's going to be a relatively sm slow process. Um, again, we, we're going to repaint CM Punk from the ground up, so uh, this was just a test, so I'm not going to keep that one. Again, the reason why I, why I don't want to keep it, because it's pretty bad. I mean, uh, if I'm going to continue to paint this, I need to repaint so many stuff in here, it's, it's, it's easier to paint it from the beginning and it's a good practice too um, so uh, uh, when I created this version I started with black and white and only then I put the black and white into color which was a mistake uh, because again if you want to learn a color harmony you need to start to work with colors as much as like uh, as fast as possible because if you will separate values from the colors you're not going to know how exactly they're good like will be connected so because of this uh, I decided that we need to work with CM Punk uh, in this particular instance um, just like with colors first so uh, for me it's going to be a super new thing I never studied with colors right away my studies always were in black and white so it's going to be an interesting but again uh, my test results are kind of fine I mean they're not bad uh, they still kind of lack contrast and again this is not the finished thing I would probably spend more time on it I kind of didn't focus on tattoos. I, I, I don't know, by the way, if we're actually going to draw every tattoo. It's going to be an interesting thing to do. Um, to create the illusion of the tattoo. It's kind of creating a painting inside of painting. It's going to be an interesting one. Again, it's still going to be a cool thing to study. So let's just go. Again, uh, I wish I saved the creating creation, create, creation process for this. Um, and then I would just basically play it, and we didn't, we wouldn't need to recreate it. But since I didn't thought that I will create this, it was just a test that went through a couple of hours. Um, yeah, let's just start from the beginning. So again, I'm probably not going to create any sketches, so let's just delete sketch layer. Um, I'm also not going to use this black and white thing. Maybe sometimes. I don't know. So we're going to work with paint layer that has mask applied, which basically allows us to do this. Um, hopefully it's not going to lag. Also before that, my brushes were at resolution, uh, at pretty big resolution. Uh, my brushes were probably an, at 1000 resolution. 
uh, then I decided, okay, they're too laggy, we need to make them smaller. I'm, I, I rarely going to use more than 20, uh, 256, so because of this, to make things less laggy, I made less resolution. But again, if I will think that this is not enough, I could bring it back and make brushes bigger. For now, I'm going to keep them smaller. And also, one of the things that make brushes lag is this thing, the spacing element. Um, so, um, if we will reduce the spacing, uh, or basically turn it off, it will stop lagging. So, this is something that we will work with. So yeah, go. Whoa. Don't tell me that it's going to... Mm, let's try to save a layout. I never s saved the Windows layout, so let's just try to do that. Um, I don't know how to call this layout. Let's just call it study. Uh, study layout. Um, and let's just try to save it. Primary workspace will work focus, show active image in all windows. I don't know what it means in this particular instance. Show active image in all windows. Yeah, so this active window uh, image is going to be showed in all windows. Yeah, which is exactly the thing that we need. Um, so, of course, in order to see if it works or not, we need to quit the program and revisit it. I, I believe at some point program will just basically crash, because when you work with multiple uh, windows, sometimes it crashes. This is one of the reasons why a long time ago I stopped working with multiple, angles, uh, multiple windows in Krita and just working with tabs. It's more stable. Okay, so start. Um, so we will start with colors, of course. Uh, we're not going to color pick them. Um, uh, we're going to actually try to eyeball them, which is going to be a much harder thing to do. Um, uh, we have less than an hour to finish with this, so we have about like probably 45 minutes to do this. Uh, I don't know where exactly it's going to get, but again, first we will start with background. Uh, right now, background is just a regular gray, uh, mid gray. So, of course, first thing that we will do is to try to make background right away the way that we're perceiving it in here. Again, without color picking, this is the way to learn how to perceive colors too. So, right now I'm learning how to look at colors in a proper way. Um, the only problem though, uh, this monitor is uh, pretty bad. I mean, it's calibrated pretty well, but I see more colors on that monitor than on that monitor, and it kind of creates a little bit weird thing. So because of this might be a good idea to actually open this reference on the second monitor in, in a regular photo to see how the Simpunk looks on a proper monitor with the proper colors. Mm. Again, this process is going to be slow, it's nothing super interesting, it's going to be at the beginning. Um, and also, it's just a regular study. Nothing super mind-blowing. And at the beginning, I don't believe it is going to be educational at all. Again, educational streams are more for Twitch. Right here, we're going to focus on uh, just entertaining stuff and uh, sometimes going to talk about educational if people will want that. But again, for now, we have zero audience, so <laughs> why bother? Uh, just, just do whatever we want to do and have fun. The main thing is to have fun on ourselves. If we're not having fun, it's a bad idea. To do things so I'm doing this for myself first and foremost and if it's going to get something give something to others it's perfect uh, once I will establish some type of a I'm, uh, I'm by the way researching things right now uh, while I'm talking once I will get a little bit more experience then I will start to focus more on the audience and less on myself and my choices will be a little bit more towards uh, oriented towards the audience but for now since there's no audience, there's no point of focusing things on, on on the audience. Because it's just going to be frustrating. I already tried that, believe me. Believe me. Uh, for almost a year. I seriously don't remember what it is. Can I find it? Good. Mm, so, yep, here it is, found it, portrait, steampunk, 
And again, the reason why I chose CM Punk, I already talked about the reason why I chose CM Punk. This is, by the way, the actual reference. Of course, I cropped it in the proper way. Uh, the reason why I chose CM Punk is because he is irrelevant for now for WWE. I mean, the only relevance that CM Punk got in terms of the WWE uh, was on Raw, because they were on Ch in Chicago, and uh, in a couple of matches, in a couple of boring matches, people are, were... shouting CM Punk, CM Punk, CM Punk. Uh, but regardless, like, uh, besides that, CM Punk is not necessarily relevant for WWE. And because of this, it's a good start, because for now, while I'm exploring things, and audience is not going to be interested in that because it's not necessarily related to WWE, um, the same goes for AJ. Uh, the only one who will be interested in that is probably hardcore fans who know these superstars and, and still a uh, fan of them. Um, fans of them, but again, I don't believe that uh, my streams are going to be entertaining for the hardcore fans. Every hardcore fan already know all this information, and I don't know. I'm I'm more focusing my streams on the audience uh, that watches WWE the way that I'm watching WWE. Kind of watches every show, but not necessarily 100% like super super into WWE and the fact like you making it the part of your life like 100 percent and um for the audience that might occasionally lose uh, like seriously how exactly this happened i didn't want to launch it cancel upload yeah that was a mistake i launched the, the wrong one for some reason i launched picasso <laughs> never tried it so yeah but again, right now, uh, let's just start painting. So, it might be a little bit lag. Okay, yeah, it's laggy a bit. And the reason why it's laggy probably because we have three windows. I never worked with three windows right away. And because I'm streaming, and it might basically lag a bit. So, yeah, it's probably because of the third windows. Uh, it's kind of a shame. I didn't want it to happen. Maybe if we will get rid of one window. We actually don't need window with a mirroring. It's kind of an necessary, I believe. One is enough. Because two windows basically creates legs. Just place Simpunk somewhere in here. Intermetal. We don't need WWE Week anymore. We could save it and close it. Again, and again, getting back to the reason why I integrated CM Punk is, uh, like, chose CM Punk as first one is the same for AJ, is, again, for the same reason. Uh, they are kind of irrelevant for WWE, and because of this, I have uh, the chance to study, uh, to focus on figuring out what exactly I need to do during those streams. Oh, snap, we actually could keep, keep, could keep it, it still lags regardless. This is pretty boring, uh, this is pretty, pretty bad. Why it's not working? Window layout. Creative study. No. Don't want. It's a problem if it's going to lag. It's a true, it's a true, 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 true problem. So yeah, uh, let's just start to work. So again, we're right away working with colors. We studied, we, we're trying to pick up what type of colors we see there. Um, it's definitely kind of brownish, I believe. So definitely in the area of the dark brown. Mm. And closer to the grays. Okay, for now, let's just keep that one. Kind of works. 
it's it's kind of a mid mid value. Of course, we're going to put darks in there, and, but for now, it works. So now, um, yeah, let's just by the way turn on these things. I don't know why it's lagging. I truly don't know. It didn't lag before. Maybe because I'm streaming it lags. Like it puts too much pressure on the memory. I don't know. I might close a creating fundamentals. I don't believe that we're going to use them today. Maybe it will freeze a little bit more memory. Let's just check the sound by the way. I believe that we're going to use them today. Maybe it will sound works. And again, um, me studying with CM Punk is just a way for me personally to prepare myself to much more serious work, and uh, on work that will be that will hopefully bring the audience to our streams. Because I don't believe that this is going to be something that people will be interested in. Some people will like get here, maybe watch for a couple of minutes, and then just going to leave because it's it's irrelevant to talk about CM Punk and whatever. But in the end, uh, in the future, I, of course, I'm going to open to every like all things WWE, and I'm ready to talk about everything that you are ready to talk about. It probably could be a good idea to try to close this. Should, let's just because it kind of lags and it's a bad thing, and I don't know why exactly it lags. Okay, let's just close Krita. Reopen it in the head and face study, which is a project that I'm going to use not only for this. Maybe, maybe we could just make this one a smaller project. Maybe one of the reasons why it's uh, laggy is because it it has a pretty big size and it has a lot of layers. Let's just try to make this project a little bit um, lighter. Resave it again. This stream is going to be weird. I'm probably not going to start with working with Zimpon throughout today. <laughs> Whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, it's all about the progress and process. So, without Windows... It still lags without Windows, though. Hmm. Interesting. It doesn't supposed to lag without Windows. So apparently it's not the problem with Windows, it's a problem with... I need to open my task manager and see what was exactly the problem what's what what gets overloaded cpu probably okay on drone drawing drawing yeah cpu like go goes crazy super crazy yep cpu goes mega super crazy Um, go with performance, <sighs> CPU, in terms of a memory limit, yeah, uh, let's just reduce the CPU limits uh, to two. Uh, the same thing I actually uh, did for, for ZBrush in order for ZBrush not to lag. Hopefully we don't need to restart on that. It's still going to create weird things. Yeah, I, I believe we actually need to restart the program in order for it to, wor to work. So advanced CPU limit two. Um, it will hopefully play cache storage on disk or on memory and just keep it there. Frame rendering clones limit. I don't know what it is. Limit frames per second while painting. Critter will try to limit number of uh, screen updates. We're going to need to use this. Per second to give a number. The lower number will decrease visual responsiveness but increase styles precision. Okay. Let's just choose 60. Kind of interesting how it's going to work. Look. 
because ideally it, it will make the styles precision a little bit better stylus precision I guess we need to restart to see the results first let's just try to choose a study thing no what's happening that was weird I don't know how exactly this thing actually opens. I guess it's not. We need to, every time that we need to relaunch the pro pro project, we need to redo this again and again and again. It's pretty annoying. Um, head and face study. I guess that this is something that I need to do outside of the stream, but sorry for that. Unfortunately, we need to do this now because this is the only time that this is lags during the stream. And I need to solve this problem now or every streamer is going to be laggy, so apparently today's stream we just talked about WWE and worked with reducing the lags. No, it's still lags. Hopefully with new version of Krita things are going to be a little bit more stable. Uh, soon uh, we'll see a 4.2 version of Krita and hopefully this Krita will give us more it actually doesn't work it doesn't it doesn't matter it doesn't matter what type of frame limit we actually establish I actually need more stylus precision than the responsiveness responsiveness is kind of fine Uh, by, by the way, reasons why it might